Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a chronic and ultimately fatal disease characterized by a progressive decline in lung function. The term pulmonary fibrosis means scarring of lung tissue and is the cause of worsening dyspnea. Fibrosis is usually associated with a poor prognosis. IPF belongs to a large group of more than 200 lung diseases known as interstitial lung diseases. Characterized by the involvement of lung interstitium, the interstitium, the tissue between the air sacs in the lung, is the primary site of injury in ILDs. However, these disorders frequently affect not only the interstitium, but also the air spaces, peripheral airways, and vessels. Lung tissue from people with IPF shows a characteristic histopathologic pattern known as usual interstitial pneumonia. UIP is therefore the pathologic counterpart of IPF. The term, idiopathic, is used because the cause of pulmonary fibrosis is still unknown. IPF usually occurs in adult individuals of between 50 and 70 years of age, particularly those with a history of cigarette smoking, and affects more men than women. The diagnosis of IPF requires exclusion of other known causes of ILDs and the presence of a typical radiological pattern identified through high-resolution computed tomography. In the right clinical setting, it is possible to make the diagnosis of IPF by HRCT alone, obviating the need for surgical lung biopsy. Treatment may include an intidanib or pyrophenidone. Classification. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis belongs to a large group of more than 200 lung diseases known as interstitial lung diseases, which are characterized by the involvement of the lung interstitium, the tissue between the air sacs of the lung. IPF is one specific presentation of idiopathic interstitial pneumonia, which is in turn a type of ILD, also known as diffuse parenchymal lung disease. The 2002 American Thoracic Society, European Respiratory Society classification of IIPs was updated in 2013. In this new classification there are three main categories of idiopathic interstitial pneumonias, major IIPs, rare IIPs, and unclassifiable IIPs. The major IIPs are grouped into chronic fibrosing IPs, smoking-related IPs, and acute, subacute IPs. Dry, inspiratory bibacilla, velcro-like crackles on or scultation, clubbing of the digits, a disfigurement of the fingertips or toes. Abnormal pulmonary function test results, with evidence of restriction and impaired gas exchange. These features are due to chronic oxygen deficiency in blood and can occur in a wide variety of other pulmonary disorders and not be specific for IPF. However, IPF should be considered in all patients with unexplained chronic exertional dyspnea who present with cough, inspiratory bibacillar crackles, or finger clubbing. Assessment of Velcro crackles on lung auscultation is a practical way to improve the earlier diagnosis of IPF. Fine crackles are easily recognized by clinicians and a characteristic of IPF. If bilateral fine crackles are present throughout the inspiratory time and are persisting after several deep breaths, and if remaining present on several occasions several weeks apart in a subject aged 60 years, this should raise the suspicion of IPF and lead to consideration of an HRCT scan of the chest which is more sensitive than a chest X-ray. As crackles are not specific for IPF, they must prompt a thorough diagnostic process. Causes The cause of IPF is unknown but certain environmental factors and exposures have been shown to increase the risk of getting IPF. Cigarette smoking is the best recognized and most accepted risk factor for IPF, and increases the risk of IPF by about twofold. Other environmental and occupational exposures such as exposure to metal dust, wood dust, coal dust, silica, stone dust, biologic dust coming from hay dust or mold spores or other agricultural products and occupations related to farming, livestock have also been shown to increase the risk for IPF.
There is some evidence that viral infections may be associated with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and other fibrotic lung diseases. Pathogenesis Despite extensive investigation, the cause of IPF remains unknown. The fibrosis in IPF has been linked to cigarette smoking, environmental factors, other medical conditions including gastroesophageal reflux disease, or to genetic predisposition. However, none of these is present in all people with IPF and therefore do not provide a completely satisfactory explanation for the disease. IPF is believed to be the result of an aberrant wound healing process including involving abnormal and excessive deposition of collagen in the pulmonary interstitium with minimal associated inflammation. It is hypothesized that the initial or repetitive injury in IPF occurs to the lung cells, called alveolar epithelial cells, which line the majority of the alveolar surface. When type 1 AECs are damaged or lost, it is thought that type 2 AECs undergo proliferation to cover the exposed basement membranes. In normal repair, the hyperplastic type 2 AECs die and the remaining cells spread and undergo a differentiation process to become type 1 AECs. Under pathologic conditions and in the presence of transforming growth factor beta, fibroblasts accumulate in these areas of damage and differentiate into myofibroblasts that secrete collagen and other proteins. In the past, it was thought that inflammation was the first event in initiating lung tissue scarring. According to the most recent findings, however, the development of fibroblastic foci precedes the accumulation of inflammatory cells and the consequent deposition of collagen. This pathogenetic model is indirectly supported by the clinical features of IPF, including an insidious onset progression over several years relatively infrequent of acute exacerbations, and failure to respond to immunosuppressive therapy. A number of therapies that target fibroblast activation or the synthesis of extracellular matrix are currently in early testing or are being considered for development. Familial IPF accounts for less than 5% of the total of patients with IPF and is clinically and histologically indistinguishable from sporadic IPF. Genetic associations include mutations in pulmonary surfactant proteins A1, A2, C and mucin. A remarkable aspect of the MUC5B variant is its high frequency of detection as it is found in approximately 20% of individuals with northern and western European ancestry and in 19% of the Framingham Heart Study population. Mutations in human telomerase genes are also associated with familial pulmonary fibrosis and in some patients with sporadic IPF. Recently an X-linked mutation in a third telomerase-associated gene, discarine, has been described in a family with IPF. Diagnosis. An earlier diagnosis of IPF is a prerequisite for earlier treatment and, potentially, improvement of the long-term clinical outcome of this progressive and ultimately fatal disease. If IPF is suspected, diagnosis can be challenging but a multidisciplinary approach involving a pulmonologist, radiologist and pathologist expert in interstitial lung disease has been shown to improve the accuracy of IPF diagnosis. A multidisciplinary consensus statement on the idiopathic interstitial pneumonia is published by the American Thoracic Society and the European Respiratory Society in 2000 proposed specific major and minor criteria for establishing the diagnosis of IPF. However, in 2011, new simplified and updated criteria for the diagnosis and management of IPF were published by the ATS as Together with the Japanese Respiratory Society and Latin American Thoracic Association, currently, a diagnosis of IPF requires exclusion of known causes of ILD, e.g., domestic and occupational environmental exposures, connective tissue disorders, or drug exposure, toxicity.
the presence of a typical radiological UIP pattern on HRCT. In the right clinical setting, it is possible to make the diagnosis of IPF by HRCT alone, obviating the need for surgical lung biopsy. Recognizing IPF in clinical practice can be challenging as symptoms often appear similar to those of more common diseases, such asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and congestive heart failure. The key issue facing clinicians is whether the presenting history, symptoms, radiology, and pulmonary function testing are collectively in keeping with the diagnosis of IPF or whether the findings are due to another process. It has long been recognized that patients with ILD related to asbestos exposure, drugs, rheumatoid arthritis and scleroderma, systemic sclerosis may be difficult to distinguish from IPF. Other differential diagnostic considerations include interstitial lung disease related to mixed connective tissue disease, advanced sarcoidosis chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis, pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis and radiation-induced lung injury. Radiology chest X-rays are useful in the follow-up routine of IPF patients. Plain chest X-rays are unfortunately not diagnostic but may reveal decreased lung volumes, typically with prominent reticular or interstitial markings near the lung bases. The radiological evaluation through HRCT is an essential point in the diagnostic pathway in IPF. HRCT is performed using a conventional computed axial tomographic scanner without injection of contrast agents. Evaluation slices are very thin, 1 to 2 mm. Typical HRCT of the chest of IPF demonstrates fibrotic changes in both lungs, with a predilection for the bases and the periphery. According to the joint ATS, as JRS, ALAT 2011 guidelines, HRCT is an essential component of the diagnostic pathway in IPF which can identify UIP by the presence of reticular opacities, often associated with traction bronchiectasis, honeycombing manifested as cluster cystic hair spaces, typically of comparable diameters but occasionally large, usually subpleural and characterized by well-defined walls and disposed in at least two lines. Generally one line of cysts is not sufficient to define honeycombing. Ground glass opacities are common but less extensive than the reticulation. Distribution characteristically basal and peripheral though often patchy. Histology according to the updated 2011 guidelines, in the absence of a typical UIP pattern on HRCT, a surgical lung biopsy is required for confident diagnosis. Histologic specimens for the diagnosis of IPF must be taken at least in three different places and be large enough that the pathologist can comment on the underlying lung architecture. Small biopsies, such as those obtained via transbronchial lung biopsy are usually not sufficient for this purpose. Hence, larger biopsies obtained surgically via a thoracotomy or thoracoscopy are usually necessary. Lung tissue from people with IPF usually show a characteristic histopathologic UIP pattern and is therefore the pathologic counterpart of IPF. Although a pathologic diagnosis of UIP often corresponds to a clinical diagnosis of IPF, a UIP histologic pattern can be seen in other diseases as well, and fibrosis of known origin. There are four key features of UIP including interstitial fibrosis in a patchwork pattern, interstitial scarring, honeycomb changes and fibroblast foci. Fibroblastic foci are dense collections of myofibroblasts and scar tissue and, together with honeycombing, are the main pathological findings that allow a diagnosis of UIP. Bronchoalveolar lavage Bronchoalveolar lavage is a well-tolerated diagnostic procedure in ILD. Balcytology analyses should be considered in the evaluation of patients with IPF at the discretion of the treating physician based on availability and experience at their institution. BAL may reveal alternative specific diagnoses.
malignancy, infections, eosinophilic pneumonia, histiocytosis X, or alveolar proteinosis. In the evaluation of patients with suspected IPF, the most important application of BAL is in the exclusion of other diagnoses. Prominent lymphocytosis generally allows excluding a diagnosis of IPF. Pulmonary function test spirometry classically reveals a reduction in the vital capacity with either a proportionate reduction in airflows, or increased airflows for the observed vital capacity. The latter finding reflects the increased lung stiffness associated with pulmonary fibrosis, which leads to increased lung elastic recoil. Measurement of static lung volumes using body plethysmography or other techniques typically reveals reduced lung volumes. This reflects the difficulty encountered in inflating the fibrotic lungs. The diffusing capacity for carbon monoxide is invariably reduced in IPF and may be the only abnormality in mild or early disease. Its impairment underlies the propensity of patients with IPF to exhibit oxygen desaturation with exercise which can also be evaluated using the 6-minute walk test. Terms such as mild, moderate, and severe are sometimes used for staging disease and are commonly based on resting pulmonary function test measurements. However, there is no clear consensus regarding the staging of IPF patients and what are the best criteria and values to use. Mild to moderate IPF has been characterized by the following functional criteria. Force vital capacity of 50%, DLCO of 30%, 6 MWT distance 150 meters.